Good morning and welcome to Locked In Stitches. One moment while I make sure that everything is going correctly. Okay, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. As always, I'm Julie Hall and with me you can see I've got Louise. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you are all doing well. Thank you so much for all of your kind comments. I am hopefully starting to do better. Fundamentally, I've got inflamed lungs and because COVID's so new to all of us, we've got no idea how long um, things are going to take to repair themselves. But, you know, as long as I'm sitting down and taking things easy, it's all good. And God knows that's the best way to do things with an embroidery machine. So today we've got for you the eye of the tiger jacket i'm loving how that looks can i have that over here and i'm just going to show people a little bit okay i can see we've got <coughs> um bernie souza rosalind preston and kerry bennett thank you for joining us okay so loving how this one looks um it's minimal colors and you'll see the stitching on it is really open except for the black which is in a satin stitch and that just adds texture to it because i am working on a darker denim today i'm actually umming and ahhing around instead of doing black of doing a metallic silver just to add a real pop so what I've done and I'll I'll come over here so that I can show you this was my six dollar denim jacket that was in my stash from Vinnie's and I've gone through and found fabrics that I thought would pop enough it was really easy with this guy because it is just so um, pale but I really didn't want the colors to fall into so we'll see as we go because we can always make changes now always double stitch it true okay so I have done some prep work here I'm just going to show you what I've done. So, the downside to this jacket is that it has a fair bit of stretch to it. Mm. But it's a cute little jacket and it was only $6. So, what I've done is I've attached iron-on to the back of the jacket. I've then laid it on top of my hoop because denim's a bugger to hoop, particularly once you've got some of these seams in it mm. it was going to pop out I tried hooping it and I could just tell immediately that within halfway through the design it would have popped out mm. so instead what I've done is I've basted it because of the stretch in the fabric I've done three different basting lines just different sizes just different sizes just to make sure that there's minimal movement along what I'm doing and of course you guys know that the basting designs are there as a freebie design and Kerry I'm oh, so glad you're able to watch along today Kerry and Ros Preston and Sandra Johnson as well thank you for joining us <coughs> okay so the goal is to avoid coughing because once I start I don't really stop um okay so and i'll show you how i set the um the basting stitches as we go through but all i want to do now is a just get rid of that little bit there and then 
I'm going to start my stitching. Now, Louise was very interested in this one. She wasn't aware that we could stitch over seams. You absolutely can. What you want to do is just make sure that your presser foot height is okay with that. And if you've got a machine that adjusts the presser foot height, that's great. What you don't want is the foot to pick that up. Yeah. My own compulsiveness. Okay. Now, while I'm getting used to it, I'm setting it on about 500 stitches at the moment. And good morning, Selena. Thank you for joining us. This is really one of those arty, all comes together in the end sort of a thing. But I just fell in love with the um, with the eyes on this tiger, and you can see there it's you know, stitching just so easily. Yeah, open. I'm really, I'm really amazed. You know, I've constricted my design work to doing one side of a panel and then another something else on another side, mm. thinking that you couldn't stitch over the seam. Oh no, and that's it, I've gone up legs of jeans and all of that. Yeah. I was actually getting some designs ready um, while I was sitting down last week for a retreat in May and we're going to do applique and we've just taken like five different applique flowers and the class is going to be on moving them around and putting them around an item of clothing. Oh, right. And Kathleen Grom, thank you from, thank you for joining us from snowy northeast Poconos! I've heard of the Poconos! That's so cool! Where's the Poconos? Poconos is in Pennsylvania. Oh, wow. Um, and I can't remember what TV show I've heard of the Poconos of. <laughs> Friends! There you go. This is what my television is based off. Um, <laughs> okay. Gail Wallace, thank you so much for joining us. Um, Okay, Anne Morgan's asking, how can you do that without the hoop? Uh, the hoop is on there, I'll show you. So we basted it in. So the hoop is there. Excuse me while I lift up and show you my shirt's underwear. Um, <laughs> that does feel a little bit like I'm lifting a skirt, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> so the hoop is there and we've used the basting stitches with wash away thread. Look at how we're coming over these. We're going to be washing that out to get rid of those stitches. So it's a new way of stitching, isn't it? This basting and... Mm. Yeah. Okay, and Sharon Miller-Wilson from Toronto, north of Toronto. I know where Toronto is. It's in Canada. There's a slight chance the Canadians will let me in. They won't let Edward in, though. Um, oh, back, Cameron would have been one, so 17 years ago, Edward went over to America for, um, with Ford, he had to go over and work for a month, um, and um, one weekend he went up to Canada, because like it's Michigan, it's right on the thing, um, and he ended up in a car accident. Ooh. 
Um, and the he got a fine, but the guy said, "Look, you know, you're from another country. Don't bother paying it. Just, you know, wait till you, you know, wait till you ever want to come back and, um, you know, and just pay it at the thing." So it's a huge joke that they won't let me into America, and they won't let him into Canada. So. <laughs> Why can't you go to America? Oh, just little things like, um, um, uh, having the right visa. Oh, right. Yeah, when you watch border security, when you've been in that position, it's not as fun. <laughs> no. What I'm always amazed at with Thread is just how different it looks when you pop it on the project. Yeah. I've really tried to go for some bright colours here. And I'm I'm really surprised at just now I'm not upset, but I'm really surprised at just how even how are the background fabric and dulled. Yes, how yeah. it's slightly dulled. I mean it looks very tigery. Um oh great question, Kathleen. Can you base a project down for any design? Pretty well any. And you can see here that my basting stitch isn't the standard basting stitch. It is a four way, or it is a um, diagonal basting stitch. So let me show you what I mean there. Okay, so here's my software. If I just come through. And I use my basting stitches so much that if I click on add a design, it's the first thing that comes up. So my basting stitch goes diagonally as well as around and it is smaller. Um, and the reason for that is it's going to hold better. The premise of it is that you want to use the wash away thread because that will actually um, allow you to easily get rid of it. Um, and they're all in different sizes. So you can pop one down on top of the other. Um, there are still things that I hoop, and I will hoop and baste um, as a as a general sort of a thing. Um, I'm I'm a fan of the more underwear, the better. Um, <laughs> the more structure to your yes to it's your project. Like, it's like the, you, when you had your girls going to their graduation. Yeah, they had beautiful yeah, underwear. They had, they had spanks on. They had you know. We were hiking those puppies up. We were making sure nobody was seeing them. We were, yeah. Yeah. And they look beautiful. Um, and Belinda is asking, did you do the diagonal basting stitch because the fabric stitch stretches? Fundamentally, yes. Um, this is, is going to help with that fabric stretching. The iron-on stabilizer on the back is going to help with the fabric stretching. It all goes together to create a better final project. Yes. Now that's going to show. Yeah. I love that shade of red. And see, I want a red of red. I'm, I'm not thrilled with that shade of red. I'm trying to use it up so that I can get a better shade of it. But see, that red would pop on white, but it won't pop as much as on here. Mm. Mm. Well, I have the painters back in my house. They're painting more walls. Oh, that's good. They yeah. do mind if they when we're done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got rid happy. of Ed's office desk yesterday. We got rid of... Oh, the, the Ed's old office desk. It's one of those, he bought it for me 16 years ago, and it was my desk.
for a number of years. Then when we moved in here and I set up an office, he, he took it over and he put a new, it was one of those things we found at a second hand shop and he put a new cover on it, he put a, and it's just, it's so hard to get rid of some of that old stuff, but you just can't keep everything. No. No, well we moved the, um, the cabinets in Carl's office and there's more carpet than carpet moths underneath it. So I think I might get new carpet in the whole lot upstairs. There you go. Um, yes. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so uh, just some questions here. Um, excuse me while I do this first, though. Okay. So what this is telling me. Doubt's going to ask me to change my thread colour. So then I will answer some questions. Now you can see there there is that tiny bit of puckering, but I'm okay with that. That's yeah, that'll stitch out the next yeah. colour. Yeah, you often get that, and then the next colour comes on top, and it all stitches out flat again. Oh, and look, we need to be aware that, you know, different fabrics have different, you know, abilities. Mm. Okay, so I'll add that red in there. Okay, so Belinda's saying, does this reduce the puckers? Um, it will reduce the puckers that you have in there absolutely so will an iron-on stabilizer on the back um kathleen saying i don't have a software program can the basting stitch be done oh hell yeah let me show you um sorry i'm just Okay, so this is my website. Um, there go, there there. I really should change that. If you go into our free designs, first thing you'll see is the free perfect based in design. If you download that, that is all of those basting stitches in all of those different sizes in all of those different formats so they are all ready to use and Belinda's saying the silver thread might not pop as much on the faded denim yeah that is, that is a, a question I think I'm gonna to have to wait to see with the rest of the um, of the colors on it Lynn Dixon's watching. Ah, oh, Rosalind Preston, her husband's doing painting as well. Well, you can send them all down here. <laughs> oh, it's always nice when a husband will do painting. <laughs> then you hi, don't have to paint for uh, And Mary Sendles there as well. Why can't you watch television? Oh. <laughs> Takes me a while. <laughs> so I've got made books. And I tell you what, this these last um, couple of weeks, particularly the last week, um, it was terrible in the hospital. I'm watching my um, my tablet drain of battery overnight. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> like I wasn't watching telly or anything on it, I was just reading a book. Um, 
but yeah, that's that when you're when you're in a sad room by yourself, um, and like they were totally hazmating up before they'd come in and see me. Um, yeah. Ah. There we go. So I always like to go back enough. Really gotta consider bifocals. So would this jacket fit one of your girls? Um, I don't know. So it might be a Christmas present for a niece. <laughs> It may even go off to your granddaughter. So what you'll find often when you're doing a um, a stretchy project is that you end up with some really big puppets. What this is doing is keeping those puppets to a very minimum amount because of the basting stitches. Oh there you go, Michelle Reynolds says the jacket's for her. Cool. As long as it's got a reason. Yep. Oh Kathleen, I'm so glad all that works for you. Michelle's with us from Bundaberg. You can have a rum for me. Hmm? Michelle's at Bundaberg. Yeah, go on the Bundy rum. I can't drink, but others should. That's exactly right. <laughs> the other thing that you'll notice about the way the designs are made, and it's hard, it's harder to see there. I'll come over and... show it on this one. So the other thing that gives texture when you're looking at a design like this is the way the stitches are created. So you can see here the orange stitches are going in that direction, the red's going in that, the blue's going in that. So all of those different directions just give added interest to the final project. So you actually bought the design and then um, put the stitches on? So I buy the artwork. Yeah. The yes. Artwork. And then create a stitch file. Yeah. yeah. Because I had a very interesting discussion with somebody um, on Saturday, and she actually designs Lego um, art, um, files. Oh wow! And sells her Lego designs on on the internet. Wow! And it, some and people have such interesting jobs, don't they? No, no, this is her hobby. She's yeah. And then she's an engineer. Yep. And she builds Lego. Cool. Yeah. And does it as a yeah a sideline. Um. Oh, Rosalind, I haunt the op shops. Um, I saw a great project the other day that I really want to try. I'll see if I can find it. Um, and I know I've got to haunt op shops for it. Uh, Kathleen's asking, will I be able to wash the jacket? Machine wash, yes. If I can't machine wash, it does not go in my house. Um, would have chucked the kids in there if they were small if I didn't think the police would have come. Yeah, none of this hand wash crap for my house.
a better look at that. The worst thing about the interest is when you know you pin something and throw a new. And you can never find it anymore. Yeah, denim shirt would be great. Um, and, um, you know, a lightweight denim shirt, particularly for those in warmer climates. Uh. So, this is from a... Um, a Pinterest thing and I just love the idea of a pair of jeans and using all the pockets and things and turning that into a gorgeous backpack um, and you can see some of the different styles that this person had and I just thought they were absolutely beautiful so now I'm haunting the um, the op shops for um sorry can i just so now i'm haunting the op shops for that perfect colored pair of jeans Julie, you idiot. Okay. So. What did you do? Now we are going to look at what we do when we stuff things up. I was not paying attention. And I have now stitched my sleep mm. down there. But that is okay. There's not a lot of stitches, and I'm not sure whether I'm going to be using a stitch eraser. So, everybody's first thought when they do this, and we all do it, like, you know, is, oh crap, I've ruined it. Oh, should I throw it away? Mm -hmm. Nah. Not that difficult. So I'm using my stitch eraser. Just to get rid of the bulk of that. Now normally I would only ever use the stitch eraser from the back. But difficult times. And I really don't want to unhoop this. you can all see what I'm actually doing here. I do apologise. I know I could sit here and say, oh yes, I do that on purpose so that you can all see that, um, you know, that everybody stuffs up, but fundamentally I just wasn't paying attention. I thought Louise was paying attention for me. <laughs> Sorry, darling. <laughs> Oh, you know, if you can ever blame somebody else. Yes, oh, that's right. And you can see that because I've taken up the majority of those stitches already, just how easily that is coming up. You do 
doing very well. So the goal is not to move the bottom too much. Yeah. Are you then going to put some wash away stabiliser on top again? Um, probably not. You reckon there's enough stabiliser left in the bottom because you've got two layers in there? I might float a bit underneath, we'll see how we go. <clears throat> okay. okay, that's pretty good. So, that's easy. I can get rid of that bit, that's just... Yeah. Yeah, that's just a bit of thread. Glasses back on. Now... Are you going to unpick all that thread out of there or are you just going to stitch nope. it at the top? But what I do need to do is then go backwards to where that bit was. Yeah. Okay. So the reason we pay attention, ladies and gentlemen, is so that we're smarter than Julie. So I'm coming up, the reason my needle thread is not doing great is because I'm coming up on needing a new needle. Son of a gun. Damn it. Let's try that bit again. And sorry, this is just me finding the right spot, guys. <laughs> Michelle Runnels found a, a thread that irons away. Yes, it would. Whoa, 27 jeans from a partner. <laughs> That's a lot of jeans to get rid of. we've redone that bit. Let's go to the next colour. Well that wasn't too bad. And it is always good to show um, yeah. you know, how to fix the stuff ups. is the denim, the blue in the denim makes this much more subtle. Yeah. 
But yeah, I'm almost thinking I'm still going to go back to the black. So, does your program in your, compu in your computer mm -hmm. change the background of the... Can you change the background? You can, but I don't often. So, you, you can check the colours. <laughs> um... Because mine, mine can, but I can never, I never do Yeah. That. I think I'm just too lazy. <laughs> well, see, so now you all feel better about um, overstitching your own stuff, guys. Yeah. <laughs> So this is where you should have had your little um, strap things on. Yeah. And as vibrant as it is on the apricot, I actually don't mind it on denim, like the subtler colours as they're coming through. Yeah. <laughs> it's looking a little more aged. It's looking a little more... It's looking more for an adult than it's for a child. Mm. Oh, Kathleen, no issues at all on questions. We love questions. Um, so I'm using an 1175 needle, and that's the needle that I use for pretty well everything because I'm too lazy to stuff around. Um, the stabilizer I'm using, again, I only use a medium weight stabilizer. The reason I use the medium weight is because I can manipulate it to do what I want. If I need extra the harder stabiliser, I can use two pieces. Just put them at 90 degree angles to each other. Many people say it's best to put two layers of medium rather than one layer of Yeah, thick. and I want stabiliser. Oh. No, I won't do that. The really thick one is really hard to get into your hoop. So I'm not a fan of the really thick stabiliser. If I come through... This is um, a block that I did last week. Loving how it's all come out. And this is my standard stabilizer. Now, what you can see here is that that tears away quite nicely. Mm. And what I'm looking for is something that isn't going to leave too much um, or that's going to tear cleanly away. 
so you can see how nice and easily that's coming away if I need a heavier piece so these two pieces are from the same line what I would do is cross point them and then you've got something that's really strong a lot of people don't understand there is actually a weft in the fiber of the stabilizer yeah um, but yeah some of those heavy stabilizers and you know we've all had them yeah. but they are they are industrial based stabilizers I find personally that they leave more fluff in the bottom of my machine <coughs> than say um, a lightweight <coughs> And yeah, so when they tell you that you need a lightweight, medium weight and heavy weight, don't believe them Kathleen. Medium weight will get you through most things. Um, so the stabilizers that I keep on my person, sorry popping bit guys coming up, I can just stop it. So the ones that I keep on my person are um, a medium weight in two different hoop sizes mm -hmm. um, 30, 40 centimeters and um, 25 centimeters then I've got my cutaway I've got a wash away and that's the basics that I use. What about the spray, if you wanted something stiffer and you had that a lighter fabric, would you use the spray starch? Spray starch is good when you need to yep, yeah. stiffen up the fabric, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's the same as the last roll of cutaway that I got, which is Excuse me if we just show our underwear again. So this is my cutaway. Yeah. My last roll came and it wasn't the iron-on that I was expecting. Oh, right. So that's fine. Basting spray. Yeah, basting spray. Yeah. Sometimes when I'm in a mood, I, I might um, <coughs> spray starch, spray the um, towels. Especially if it's a, a big towel. Okay. Sometimes. I have never sprayed, I've never starched or ironed a towel. No, but sometimes I think, oh, I think I might just, I just have a mood. Okay. I might just give it a little st spray and just to glue it to the, yep, to the, yep, to the lightweight starch. And, and the next time I won't do it. Now, the basting stitches are perfect for towels. Oh, and Louise, can I show people the towels that you've been yes. working on? <laughs> so, you guys remember the other week when we did the double zip makeup bag? Still loving. Louise has taken her designs and used them in a slightly different way. So she's been putting them on towels and I think they are just looking lovely. So that's the Be Unique. Loving the beautiful. Coming over here to put another colour of thread in.
I used to laugh at my mum not being able to thread a needle. It's not as funny now. No. I do like the way the colours are melding though. Yeah. I think that's quite pretty. Okay, Selena's asking, she doesn't have any water soluble thread. Should I wait to do this design until I get some? The other option, Selena, is that you're going to end up unpicking and it's going to be a little bit of a bugger to do. Mm. So I would consider waiting until you had the thread. <laughs> I like that Sharon sitting there. Who else is pursing their lips and sticking out their tongue to help me thread the needle? <laughs> what about stitching in a pale blue thread? Sorry? Stitching this one in a pale blue thread. You're still going to end up trying to unpick yeah. under the yeah. stitches yeah. and it's not going to be good. And then the last one <coughs> that, um, that Louise has done is using the Hello Beautiful design which is just gorgeous as well. Yes, it was lovely to be young and smug and I can thread needles, I can do this, I can do that. Mm. Yeah, it's not so good now. No. <laughs> Emma made us dinner last night. Well, we've done really well this weekend, actually. Oh. Well, I've done well anyway. Um, Edward made pizza on Saturday night. Um, we... Um, no, there was something wrong there. having much success with it. No, I might need a bit of serum. And that's a superior thread. Might be an old superior thread then. So, as you guys know, if in doubt, dab a little serum. And this is just one of those lubricants that um, is non-oily. Um, it is water-based and it allows the thread to glide. It's super wonderful. While Louise goes through it, I'm pretty sure she's been using it on um, on her husband's cereal. <laughs> No, I've just got a lot of older threads. Here. Yeah. So now I'm quite liking the subtlety as, as this one's coming up. Yes, the variegated threads are just stunning there, Louise, everyone's saying. Yeah. And this oh. is for a young girl named Opal. Oh, she's a baby. Oh, she's a baby? Yes. Um, and I'm making, I'm making a, a, baby t a baby towel for her, and I wanted to find a thread mm. that suited, um, her name's Opal. So yeah. I'm, yeah. So... No, I think that's a nice thread for it. Yeah. And I thought that ta the op opals are, uh, the really good opals are got, got red and blue and purple in them. Mm -hmm. But it's finding that thread that was nice. Yeah. And Belinda, I'm going to show you those designs. 
They were designs that we did a couple of weeks ago, two weeks ago, I think. Um, and they're just supposed to be positive. Like, I, I'm doing the um, the makeup bags for the nieces as Christmas presents. And, yeah, just something that's, that's positive. I think it would be lovely to do a towels for people with Hello Beautiful and Hello Handsome. Mm. Okay, so we're almost finished with all of the open weave stitching. We're going to add, start adding some highlight now. And these two colours have some ink on them. So the first one's white, just to give our tiger some detail. Weekend. We had a long weekend here. And Victoria had a long weekend too. They had a yeah. Big day. Yeah, I, I'm used to Victoria's because I spent 10 years down there. Okay, so Kerry's asking about the thread serum. So the thread serum is just a little 10 ml bottle. And while we're stitching, what it is is it is just a water-based lubricant that lets the thread glide through. Now, one of the joys of it is, because it's water-based, it's not going to deteriorate your thread. The other joy is that it then lubricates the thread path, mm. so everything then glides through better as well. Um, and I and I hate to say this, but I think it you don't have to have your sewing machine serviced as much. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, because mine's working really well. Yeah. Yeah. And my overlock is working really well. Oh, good. Yeah. And it's a very old uh, overlocker. She's having the same problems that we have. <laughs> okay. So it's used the thread serum on um um What was he fixing the other week? He was looking for a lubricant and he couldn't find any 
WD-40 or something. Or, oh, okay. So, yeah, we came and mooched some... <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it just lets the thread sing and really gets you the ability to do some, to use threads that you otherwise wouldn't be able to save. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, Kathleen, that's going to kill you coming from. Um, I think there is a product in America I can't remember the name of it though. Thread Glide, something like that. Um, it's a product I sell, Kerry. little white whiskers he looks lovely doesn't he before the black now quite honestly you could take the minimalist approach and leave it at the first eight colors so it's the eighth color that I'm on to now I've got to say though that I do like the satin of the black <clears throat> to get myself a new <laughs> refill my threads here. So yeah, you can kind of start to see him now. Um, the one thing I would say, Kathleen, just be aware there are a couple of um, spray lubricants and I worry about the aerosol in it um, so just be aware of that Final colour, which is our black. <clears throat> and this is going to take quite a while to stitch, I think. <laughs> and what you'll see. The other thing that you can do Brenda Snyder, thank you for joining us darling 9pm here in southwest Georgia There you go Okay, so The other thing that I've done here Is I've just used the ninth colour And I've stitched it out 
and it just gives again that different effect again which I think just finishes off that shirt And then what we're left with is this satiny um, black stitching. Now, how good would this one look? Because there's so many different things you could do with it. Um, Like a look on the handbag. Mm. been trying to um, stitch and get something sorted out um, and it really just hasn't happened and that's okay I'm taking things slow I got all my colors cut yesterday um, um, you've all seen the diva wallet I'm doing a version of the Diva wallet with the sewing um, boutique. For those of you who haven't seen the Diva wallet, Fabulous. Kathleen, you're going to love that. Um, so this is my Diva wallet and we stitched this last year. But I wanted something to go with the um, with the sewing boutique and I think this one will just be gorgeous so hopefully that is my goal for this week and that's just stitching beautifully I didn't think the black was going to pop enough, but I think the black's, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think you need the black. Mm. Either the black or charcoal. And what's everybody else up to this week? 
<laughs> I'm going to go and see the Van Gogh exhibition. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, good on you. Yeah. I've heard really good things about it. Yeah. From people who saw it in Melbourne and... Oh, good. Um, yeah, I saw some of the Van Gogh paintings when I went to Europe to with my uncle took me to see it. Oh, lovely. Yeah, so... And Belle's with us from Tennessee. Thank you for joining us. Hopefully the weather's starting to get a bit nicer where you are. <coughs> well, at least over in Tennessee, they'd be completely different designs over there. Nobody would be having your designs <laughs> over there. Whoops, <laughs> something snapped. And yep, that was thread not coming off correctly. See, the machine knows I haven't turned it on for a week. Mm, it's saying I've missed you. Oh, fuck up. So yes, we had pizza by Edward. We had um, Cameron made um, chicken burgers. Oh, they'd be nice. Um, and they were like he marinated them in this peri peri marinade. <gasps> it's just lovely. Um, and then last night Emma did tomato soup from scratch. Oh, nice. So tonight I'm doing a. <coughs> Tortellini. Mm. Um, the exotic food in your house. Oh, I think a packaged tortellini that you, you know, boil up and then fry off with sun dried tomatoes and prosciutto and a couple of other bits. Oh, sorry, uh, Kathleen's asking about the needle that I was using. It's the 1175, but it's an organ. So, I only ever use the organs. They last such a long time. I um, got two drumsticks <laughs> from the turkey drumsticks from, Wool from Woolworths. Oh yeah. And I made turkey drumsticks. In the crock pot. Very so nice. Batch number two mm -hmm. tonight. Oh, look, I just get sick of doing the same thing over and over again. Mmm. So, you know, you check Pinterest, you check this, you check that. Oh, no. I just check my imagination. And Carl likes lamb chops, so. and there's only two of us. You can afford yeah. the lamb chops then. Well, see, because I was supposed to be away last week, <coughs> um, and my sister-in-law was coming to help me with Newcastle, so she'd come up just before I went to hospital, and then stayed for the week because she just wanted a holiday as well. Um, but, and look, she's she's so helpful that she's, oh God help us, um, I'd backed the boutique group and I'd thrown away the excess. I didn't want the excess. So she pulled it out, folded it up and put it in one of my favourite storage boxes, put in the wrong one. <laughs> and it's just those little fingers down a chalkboard. I knew you wouldn't want to throw this away. No, I kind of did. <laughs> So you just have to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> to a degree. She can, you know, play house in my house as much as she wants. When it comes to my office, it's a little bit of piss off. Mm. That's coming up beautifully though. I'm loving how that looks. <clears throat> Somehow, 
I think it's nicer on the blue than it is on the... Okay. Do you think so or not? Look, I do. I think it's... I think it's certainly subtler. Yeah. I'm really impressed how it's stitching over the seam. <laughs> I would have never. It is Selena, isn't it? It's just popping that whole thing. And quite honestly, that white had looked like it all faded in until you put the black around it. Yes. That's yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking whether you can unpick some of this seam put Mm. The black on a, on a pocket. And I might even go the orange for that. Oh, do it in orange. Mm. All right. He almost looks a little more masculine, actually, on the blue as well. Yeah. <clears throat> such a quick class because there's it's such a small embroidery that you can do but next week we are going to do embroidering on a baseball cap on any machine now I've gone to the good old Kmart for my hats and let me take another cup before I move and then I'll go and try and find my hats. <coughs> Can you point me in the direction? No. Oh, okay. Let's go over here. It just not I just took my eye off it for a minute. Is it the thread? Oh, the thread's crap. Absolutely. Oh, okay. crap that I had around. Uh. 
Okay, so Kerry, fantastic question. The design is multi-sized. There is a five and a half inch that will fit into your 300E. Okay, so this is the first hat that I did. Um, and all we're going to do, and you can put whatever you would like on there. Um, you can see I've got another one there, and this was $4 from Kmart. So what we're going to do is show you how to manipulate your hat into the right place so that you can do the embroidery on it. How to use the um, wash away thread to baste it down and how you don't need the cap hoop to be able to do that. Ooh, with only one eye, he looks a little bit evil, doesn't he? I see what you mean. You can see the wash away through. Mm. Yeah, you don't want to be unpicking that crap. No. I might have a meeting with the washing machine this afternoon. Yeah. Could stand to do a load. A rinse cycle is very handy. <laughs> I forbade Cameron to use the dryer last week. Just. And look, I had the same problem when I moved in with Edward cramming so much into the washing machine that I'm stupefied that any water could get in. Yeah. It's okay to do two loads. So, you know, my kids are now 16 and nearly 18. Um, they're old enough to do their own washing. But yeah, cramming every single thing into a single load so that it doesn't actually get washed and then jamming it into the dryer so he put wrinkles. well he put his duvet in there as well his duvet cover and then everything oh uh, we've got a problem there maybe, maybe not. Because, you know, what is it with socks then going into the duvet cover and it all gets um, mished up and he leaves it there for two days and it stinks and it's got to be washed again. And... same as my husband used to wash on cold water um, and you know he wears business shirts but back in the day he'd spend a lot of time down in the factory looking at the engineering process and helping and you know they get a little stink mm. and a cold wash just doesn't always get the stink out mm. and yeah you'd, you'd go to iron his business shirts um, and yeah, as soon as you put heat to them, you get the stain. Oh God, no! It was the first thing I changed. <laughs> Absolutely, I get that it's total teenagers. And then he comes out at ten o'clock last night. I need you to write me a cover letter. 
for what job? For what? Oh, just a basic one. So this afternoon when he gets home, we'll write a cover letter. <laughs> Is he trying to get a job somewhere else? Yeah. Oh, he's very fond of money. Uh, Kerry, you're right. At least he can cook and he does cook. Yes. And the joy of him not being at Macca's is I can choose what night he cooks. Um, yeah. Um, because working at Macca's is very dependent. It causes a great pressure on parents. Mm. I do, I, you know, I don't agree with kids working at Macca's. Um, look, I think it was really good for him. Um, but now he's got to move on to the next thing. Yeah. It's all very well for these children to work at Macca's, but it, Macca's expects the parents to. Yeah. And I'm sorry. But so now I think he's going for good guys next. I just don't agree with parents having to get up at six o'clock in the morning to drive kids to work. Oh, uh, I don't mind that. I, you know, I look at it as, yeah, it's what we do to get our, you know, to move the little darlings forward. It's, it's teaching those little darlings to be thankful to me for doing it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't no, miss anything. I think it's, I think it's child labour. Mm. That's what I think it is. Oh, it's what their premise is built on, absolutely. Yeah. I know self-praise and everything. Dee Dee, how you going? So glad you could make it today. I'm doing, I'm doing a lot better. This will be my effort for the day. I will probably go and have a nap after this. Um, but I've been talking for over an hour now. And I'm not on Ed's CPAP machine, so life's pretty good. Yes, I didn't expect you to ask this one. And you haven't got any bubbles in your fabric? No, there's a little, there's, there's a, a tiny little bubble sort of there, but Nothing that no. Nothing really to um Oh and that was one of the stupid things. And I'm saying this so you all get a laugh, don't worry. Um one of the issues I had this week as I'm, you know, struggling around trying to breathe, trying to I'd put on one of my really nice, good foundation garment bras. Oh no, people without boots, you don't understand. <laughs> no, but it would be too tight around your chest. Exactly. I had to go for the for the scuzzy old weekend one. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Didn't even think of that. I thought I'm keeping everything in an upright position. Not good. No. <laughs> I didn't even know I would put one of myself <laughs> one
And there's just some zen to it as well. Yeah. I now know what to put on the... I have this denim jacket at home that my sister got me for the same binnies. Wait a second, I'm going to move the sleeve out of the way. <laughs> Why don't you trust me? <laughs> One day I'll meet all the, some of these people. <laughs> some of these girls. There's only five minutes to go, peeps. Oh, so none of this side's going to be stitched, only this side. Yeah. Oh, of course. Um, Kathleen's saying, largest tube is six by ten. Absolutely. There is a, let me confirm size there, Kathleen. So the design comes in all the sizes. Um, I hate this, you've got to choose whether you want the eight or the nine or the seven or the six. So six inches is because my mind is not working at the moment, is 15 centimetres. So absolutely, we've got a six inch size there. The design doesn't have the basting stitch built in. Instead, you can download it from free off our website, Selena. So if you go to the website, and you go into free designs, you can download, just click on the perfect basting stitch, and it will download all the different sizes. <laughs> My sister celebrated 30 years married. Oh, how last nice! Week. Week. That's lovely for her. So, she was she was really upset. The one piece of jewellery she liked, that she, that she felt a real connection with at mum's, was um, a beautiful pearl ring. And we just can't find it. Who knows? Haven't been able to find it ever since mum was gone. Um, so finally she said, okay, 30th anniversary, 52nd birthday, I think. Um, Probably you can buy me a And And um, so they went out and they got a really nice pearl ring for it. It was just oh, lovely. Good. No, oh, Selena's saying she's hitting the big 30 as well. Okay, Belinda's asking where are the basting stitches? Let me know. So if you're on my website, just go into the free designs. And you've got the free perfect basting stitches. <coughs> I hit 20 next year, 20 years married. Oh, wow. And 50 this year, so. Really? No, you, you've got. Oh, yeah, I hit 50 in December, yeah. Perfect. No, we're still in the 40 rain. <clears throat> And 
this is the last little bit. There's my brother turned 70 this year. It's always very interesting, like different people honour those who've passed differently. Mm. Um, and it's my father-in-law's birthday. It would have been my father-in-law's birthday at the end of this month. Um, and I always just, you know, remind my husband because he doesn't remember any of that sort of stuff. Okay. But... Yeah, it's it's very interesting. I kind of I try and get the kids to what's our favourite pop story? What's our favourite? Cause yeah, we're ghouls. We always talk about the dead in our family. Yeah, we tend to now too, yeah. Um right, did you drop some here? Let me pick it up for you. Hell, normally we go out and celebrate mum's birthday. Um you know, apart from the fact that I've been too sick, Kerry hasn't been, you know. Um because Kerry Bennett, who's here, was Mum's bestie, um, and her husband's birthday was the same week. Oh, so right. yeah, we'd all go out and celebrate Paul's birthday and Mum's birthday, and got to find time to do that again, Kerry. So that is our finished design, and I am thinking that that is pretty darn nice. Mm. Would that fit you? I don't know. So. Being the careful kind of girl I am, I'm just going to put it on to show you. When it comes to your cutaway, you want to leave a little bit of cutaway around the design, if possible, just to allow it to give that long-standing support. Okay, let's put it on. So let's see if that fits you. Not that I actually want it. Painty, but <laughs> let me take a photo to show people. <laughs> okay, so come over here. You reckon guys not bad for a six dollar jacket no so i'm going to run that through the rinse cycle and get rid of those threads and then i'll dry it off and i'll post pictures but i am thinking that that looks lovely um so thank you all for joining me today um i'm hoping to be here on thursday night to do the same thing um but <coughs> it really does just depend on how the breathing goes so until next time guys have a stitch